Melchizedek, real quickly, he is not Jesus, if that's what you're asking me. Melchizedek is not an appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. Is that what you're asking me, slave for gold, for God? I'll give you an article I wrote on it, but I'll give you a proof of it real quickly. Is that what you're asking me? Is Melchizedek, okay. Hebrews 7, verse 3 and verse 15. Hebrews 7, verse 3 and verse 15. Sargon went to Iraq. He's visiting Iraq because this guy's got no question. All right, slave, listen to this. Hebrews 7, 3 and 15. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. And now speaking of Jesus, and it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest. So it says Melchizedek is made like Jesus and Jesus is like Melchizedek. If you're like someone, you're not that someone. Melchizedek was made like Jesus, and Jesus is in the likeness of Melchizedek. If you're like someone, you're not that someone. Because Abraham knew that he's a priest of God, and the priest had the right to your tithe, just like the Levitical priest received the tithe from Israel. What kind of question is that? Abraham knew that this was a priest of God, Honored by God, exalted by God, and served God and wanted his blessing. All right? So, slave, did you get your answer? No, I can't talk about Jesus going to hell right now. It's going to take too long. Did you get your answer, slave? Okay. Now, let me explain why it says without father and mother, without beginning days or end of life, without genealogy. Okay, let me explain that. Are you ready? And I'm going to give you the article before I end the session. I have an article on this. Why does Hebrew say Melchizedek has no father and mother, no beginning of days, no end of life, no genealogy? Okay. Why is he saying that? Okay. What Hebrews is telling you is God inspired the author of Genesis, Moses, to depict Melchizedek in such a way as to give you the impression Melchizedek has no parents, wasn't born, wasn't, uh, and didn't die. Why? Because Melchizedek appears out of nowhere. We're not told his, who his parents are. We're not told that he was born. We're not told that he died and was replaced. He appears out of nowhere, and he's so great, Abraham recognizes his greatness, that this man is truly a priest of God, anointed by God, and I need to be blessed of him. So why were those details omitted? Because God was inspiring Moses to describe Melchizedek in such a way to give you the impression that Melchizedek was an eternal person, not because he was, but because he was designed to be a picture of the reality. Remember what I've been telling you guys. All the Old Testament is a shadow of the reality. The reality is Jesus. The Old Testament is a shadow. See, when you see a shadow, you know someone's coming. If you look at a shadow and you see a shadow that looks like a dog, you know a dog is coming. If you see a shadow that looks like a cat, you know a cat is coming. If you see a shadow that looks like a human, you know a human being is coming. So what Hebrews is saying is God designed the Old Testament to be a shadow so you know who's coming. So if Melchizedek is designed in such a way to appear as an eternal person, uncreated and deathless, guess what, folks? That means the person that he's pointing to, he is eternal. He is deathless. He is uncreated. Melchizedek is a shadow, not the reality. The reality is Jesus. So Melchizedek was designed to be eternal, not because he was, because he's a shadow of the one who is eternal and a priest forever. You get it now? Everything went smooth, but I'm not still completely free, Duncan. Keep praying for my miracle. Is it making sense now? Enoch is simply taking Daniel 7 and running with it and bringing out the theological import implications of Daniel 7, which Jesus fulfills perfectly. Okay, I want everyone to get this point. Now, now let me tell you how amazingly an amazing picture Melchizedek is of Jesus. Hebrews 7, 1 and 3 tells you. Melchizedek means... My king is righteous, or the king of righteousness. 
Malka Zadik, Zadok. That means king of righteousness and king of Sal and Salem, Shalim, which later became Jerusalem. Shalim is the same word where we get shalom, peace. So notice this one is the king of righteousness, the king of peace. Lo and behold, Jesus is the prince of peace, and he is righteous and the king of righteousness. That's number one. Number two. When Melchizedek meets Abraham and his 318 men, he brings bread and wine and eats with them bread and wine. What did Jesus do? Broke bread and gave wine as the Eucharist celebrating his death for our sins. Do you think that's a coincidence? Do you think that's a coincidence? Genesis 14, 18 and 20. Melchizedek, meaning king of righteousness. King of Salem. Mel Melchit Shalem. King of peace. Bread and wine. Jesus. King of kings. Lord of lords. King of peace. Prince of peace. King of righteousness. The righteous one of God. And he gives bread and wine. And he's a priest. Wow. So you see what Hebrews is saying? Melchizedek is not eternal. But he's depicted in such a way to point to the one who is eternal by nature, who is uncreated by nature, who became flesh to die as a sacrifice for our sins and now abides as a priest forever, who truly is the king of righteousness, the king of peace, who gave bread and wine to his servants. Okay, now let me get the article and that's it. We're done.